getting tired of drawing this picture. I think you're probably getting tired of seeing it. Here's my region, my little rectangle that I'm going to take, lay down over here. Lay down. This isn't going to hurt. Well, at least you're paying attention. Ron, I, I wasn't sure if you were there, but you are. OK. There we go. Equilateral triangle. So like this. Right? All the sides are the same. So just like everything else, we just need to come up with you know, a way to find the volume of that. We, we know this, right? We know this is dx. What we need now is the area, don't we? The, the area of the face of this. Whatever the area of the face of this is times dx is the volume. So what's the area of that triangle? And, and I heard Zach said that this right here we know is what? 2 minus 2x squared. We've got that? All of them are the same, aren't they? But what's the area? One, ta one half base times height. Do you know the height? All the sides are the same, but that doesn't tell you anything about the height. Is it one? It moves. The triangle's changing, right? The Remember this. Here's your triangle. Right? As you move it around, the triangle gets smaller. Right? Is it half of that? I don't know. Let's be safe. Let's make sure we all understand how an equilateral triangle like this would work. This is 2 minus 2x squared. I'm looking at this just straight on. We, everyone in here said that the area of this was what? Half of base times height? The base in this problem is? 2 minus 2x squared, the height is right here. So I want some ideas here on how I'm going to figure out what that height is. Take half of what? Half of this would be from here to here. Do you all agree we could do that? So you're just telling me to look at half of it then, right? That's half of it. This is h. Now what? 2 minus 2x squared. The hypotenuse is the actual other length, so that's 2 minus 2x squared. And then what? Pythagorean. Pythagorean, right? This squared plus this squared is this squared. No, this squared plus this squared is this squared. Right? You are paying attention, Ron. All right, so we could do that, right? We could, and we, we would actually have an equation that has h in it and x. And we could solve for h and replace that h with that equation of x. Too hard. Too much work. OK. So I'm going to remind you of something here. This is important because it, it's come up in calculus before, so I want to, want to make sure you're aware of it now. OK? Go back to this picture. We knew that all sides were the same, right? We have the classic formula. For the area of a triangle, area equals 1 half base times height. But we have another one. And I know for a fact I told you what it was. It was very early in this class. The one with sine? It was the one with sine. 1 half AB sine theta. This is the formula for the area of a triangle if you know two sides and the angle between them. This is the formula we would use. Because it's equilateral, what does theta have to be? 60 degrees. And what is sine of 60 degrees? Root 3 over 2. Root 3 over 2. So that means this formula becomes 1 half a times b times root 3 over 2, which is root 3 over 4, just putting this and this together, 
And then look, if A and B are the same, right, on an equilateral triangle, this becomes what, like B squared? I could have said A squared, but. This is a general formula for any triangle. This is actually the formula for the area of an equilateral triangle. Because equilateral will always have 30, uh, 60 degrees. You'll always get this formula. And A will always be B if they're equilateral, right? So that is actually a formula we can use. So what's the area of this triangle, everyone? Root 3 over 4 times 2 minus 2x squared squared. Now, if you were to do it the other way with that right triangle and do it and solve and put, you will get the exact same expression. But it's much less work if we remember this. OK? So back to that little slab thing we had. What's the volume of that thing going to be? That times dx. That's it, right? We just need to throw that little width in there, dx. So we want to integrate now, right? Integrate negative 1 to 1. That with a dx tacked on, and, and we're there. Y'all OK? Feels like Monday. I'm going to pull root 3 over 4 out because it's a constant. 2 minus 2x two squared squared dx. That would be the volume of that shape. We didn't look at the shape. It's cool looking, though. Whatever the heck that is. I like that. Looks like you could hurt someone with that, right? Like a hat. My poor internet students have no idea what I'm talking about. All these files are available to my internet students, so see if any of them ask me for it. Um, what do y'all think? Going to have a problem like this on test for sure. All right. I'm going to give you a region. I'm going to tell you what perpendicular. Help me with the wording on this one, this one we just did. I would say, you know, a region is bounded by y equals 1 minus x squared and x squared minus 1. Cross sections perpendicular to the x-axis form equilateral triangles, right? In the wording, it should all be there. All right, I think I'm ready to move on. Did I give you a homework assignment out of here? I did, right? But I didn't give you the full assignment. So what did I say on 7.2, 1 through 11? So you should probably do in page 379, I already gave you 1 through 11. I believe I want you to go through, you should probably go through 19, 1 through 19 odds. I think that's what I did on my videos. I think, all the, I, think I did 1 through 19 odd. But then you should also do. Like 39, 40. And for uh, the shells section, which is page 385, I would just look at Nine through thirteen odds. So I was thinking about this while we were drawing this equilateral triangle. I asked, I was saying, hey, you know, 
equilateral triangle, all the angles have to be the same. So I said, you know, what's, uh, what's this angle? Everyone said 60 degrees. Are you raising your hand? Yeah. Yes. What's I do not have notes on this, but I do check to see online to see if I have old tests. My old tests will have the wording, and that way you can go look. If you can't find something, let me know. I'll put something up there. Um, I said, okay, yeah, you know, 60 degrees, and everyone said they agreed, right? Why? Some of the angles of a triangle. Is 180 degrees, right? Mm -hmm. Not always, right? Not always. So I'm just going to show you this real quick. Um, we all know triangles, and we're usually, well, when we work with um, triangles, we're in two dimensional space, right? On a flat sheet of paper. And the rules on a flat sheet of paper are that if you draw a triangle on a flat sheet of paper, the sum of the angles must be 180. We all agree on that. That's called Euclidean, two-dimensional Euclidean space. But if you go to what's called spherical space or spherical, uh, spherical geometry, where instead of living on a flat sheet of paper, you live on a sphere. And what I mean by that is the surface of the sphere is your space. You cannot go off the surface. You can't go into the center of the surface. The, 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 you live on the surface, right? That's called spherical geometry or spherical space. If you're on a spherical space, then you look at what a triangle is on a sphere. So take, let's say, the North Pole. If you go down to the equator from the North Pole, you would go in a straight line, right? Well, you would walk straight down to the equator. But because you're on a sphere, you have to walk on the curvature of the sphere, don't you? So you'd go like this, and you'd walk down. You'd go down to the equator like that. For you, it would appear to be a straight line because you're just walking straight, yes? but we know it's curved. And then on this side from here to here, let's go to the equator over here. We get another point. And if we walk along the equator, we connect these. So on that sphere, that's a triangle. It's three points connected. That's what this was, three points connected within the space, right? That's three points connected within the space. The angle between these two right here Imagine like a tangent line right, running along that curve. And then imagine a tangent line running along that curve. When they come together, they're going to come together at 90 degrees, aren't they? So this is going to form a right angle right there between those two. And so is this. But you have another one up there, which this one, that could vary because I can make it very narrow. You know, I could have walked. I could have walked like this. Just do a real small little slice like that. I don't know if y'all can see that. That's not a good one. Let me go like this. That's supposed to be like a slice into the sphere. You see it? OK, so the, this, this angle up here is, well, doesn't have to be 90 is what I'm saying. But the problem is we've already used up, what, 90 and 90? We're already at 180. Aren't we? And then we have another one up there. So when you say that the uh, sum of the angles of a triangle have to be 180, the real thing that should be asked after that is, well, what space are you in? If you're in two-dimensional space, yes, I agree. But if you're in some other space, that doesn't have to be the case. Just a little FYI. For those of you doing more math, that comes from a class called non-Euclidean geometry. Sounds annoying. <laughs> well, I said that's Euclidean geometry, two-dimensional space. It's non-Euclidean geometry is the class. So everything not that. It's cool. It's a cool class. Yeah, it still sounds annoying, but all right, we're going to move into 7.4. And we're going to do 7.5. We're going to knock it out in the next 25 minutes because I'm not going to do a complete full treatment of these two sections. A lot, a lot of instructors actually don't dedicate a lot of time to this. But I think it's worth looking at, all right? Um, so please, with an asterisk next to this, 
but I'm not giving you the full treatment here, okay? It's just, just going to focus on functions of x, only functions of x, and that's it. I'm not going to be worried about functions of y, right? Just functions of x. If you want to get in, change it where there are functions of y, then it, you, know, you have to look into this section a little bit deeper on your own. But I, won't, I will only test you on something like this, all right? So 7.4 is called arc length, and 7.5 is called surface area. And they're very much connected. So let's start with arc length. If I have this curve, and I take this curve off the sheet of paper, and I straighten it out like it's a string, and I put the two ends here, I would like to know what this length is, L. That, that curve taken and stretched out. Yes? Understand? So the way I'm going to do this is just like I did before. I'm going to try and approximate a little tiny infinitesimal lay, length and then add all those little infinitesimal lengths together to get the total length. Just like when we wanted to find the total area, we looked at an infinitesimal area and then added up all the infinitesimal areas, right? So let's zoom in, okay? You like zooming in? Let's zoom in. I'm going to zoom in right there, this really little, tiny little infinitesimal little piece of that curve. Here it's zoomed in. Here it is. All right. I have this little piece of the curve right there, right? Zoomed into it. I have two endpoints to that little piece, don't I? I can approximate, approximate the length of this curve with a straight line. Do you agree that that blue straight line is approximately equal to that curve? How could I get a better approximation? Go even, even, even finer, right? Even smaller piece. But see, I'm going to get to that because I'm going to use an integral, and the integral is going to let me cut this up into an infinite number of pieces, right? So what I'm going to do now is figure out if I can get, get a grip, a, a measurable quantity for that blue piece. So I'm going to create a right triangle. Doesn't that seem pretty natural? How wide? do you think this is? What do you think the distance from this to this will be? We want it to be what? Infinitesimally, and what did we use for infinitesimally wide thing? dx, right? Didn't that we, isn't that what we use for dx? Yes? This is dx. And the slope of this line should be approximately the derivative, shouldn't it? Cal 1, the derivative is y prime. And that means rise over run, slope, should be the derivative. That means that this side has to be dy, the infinitesimal change in y. So that if I take dy over dx, rise over run, I get y prime. Isn't dy dx, isn't dy dx y prime, isn't it? And that should be the slope of the tangent line. You all following me? With that, can you tell me what this little length, I'm called little l, not capital L. Capital L is the whole thing I want, right? This little l right there, I don't write in cursive often, but there's cursive l. How are you going to get little l? What now? No, just give me, a, give me a way of determining L from what we have, the other parts of that picture. Yeah, it's just Pythagorean, right? Pythagorean, I could set up a relationship between these. It would read as follows. dx squared plus, oops, sorry, dy squared equals L squared. Yeah, that's a relationship. And I can solve for L by taking the square root of both sides. So little l would be equal to square root of dx 
squared plus dy squared. Yeah? I'm only going to take the positive because L is a length, right? So I don't take the negative root. Now, what we've done in the past is once we've determined a value for this, haven't we brought in the integral? Right? And we added these up. We're going to run into a little bit of a problem here. Remember, this was the zoom in, right? This was the zoom in. Here was the graph originally. We zoomed into this little piece. This x value where we started and stopped will be a and b, right? So we do know our integral should go between a and b. But what's the problem with the integral that I have right now? Does anyone see what the problem is? It should go from a to b. It, what's that? Yeah, it has x and y in it, doesn't it? I mean, look, this is, if this is what belongs in here, what the heck is that? <laughs> Right? I mean, like, what the hell is this thing? Remember, all I have is some function of x here, right? Some function of x. I'm trying to figure out the length of it. Oh, so I'm supposed to take the square root of dx squared plus dy squared. And notice I don't even have out here dx. Like, I don't have that differential out here that tells us with respect to what variable doesn't even appear here. So does this kind of look like something we have not seen? Okay. It should, look, it should not look familiar at all to you. So I'm going to help us force something nice out of that. Here it comes. Recall the definition of the derivative of f, of, which we also called y prime, right? When f was, when we said y was equal to f of x, f prime of x was equal to y prime. But there was another notation, dy dx, yeah? Okay, look at these two right here. If I multiply, and this, there, I know there's some, there's some things, anyone who ever, any real math major that would be watching this video would understand that I'm kind of breaking the rules here, but for a class like this, this is okay, all right? We're going to multiply both sides by dx, essentially here, and we get y prime dx equals dy. This is the way the book explains it too, so I'm not really like straying away from what people normally do to explain this. But I need a little disclaimer, sorry. You all kind of buy that? You buy this? I can replace dy with this. So I would like us to go back up to that expression. I'd like us to replace the dy with that. So integral a to b square root dx squared plus y prime dx squared, right? And this is multiplication right here. What can I do inside that root? Anyone see it? Pull out a dx, Pull out, a DX out of the entire root, right? This has a dx squared. This one has a dx squared also, once I square it. They both have dx squared. I can factor it out and then pull that out of the entire root as a dx. So what's still in the root if I pull out a dx squared? 1 plus y prime. And the dx came out, so I'm going to slap it to the back. Uh, y prime squared, thank you. Y prime squared. So this, this part right here, I didn't show this, but this was y prime squared times dx squared. And then since these both have dx squared, we pull it out and then pull out square root of dx squared is just dx. Does that look like something you can handle now? If you want to know the length of this arc, if you want to know the length of this curve of the function of x between a and b, then you must be able to do what? Take the antiderivative of the square root of 1 plus the derivative of the function squared. And that will give you the length of that arc. What do you all think? Is that okay? It's a formula. 
Now we need to apply it. You all want to do an example? Absolutely. Now I did these, I did these, uh, the videos for this homework set already. So these are all out there and the next section is also out on the web. So I've got everything through ch the end of chapter seven is out there. All right, so let's find the length, find the length of y equals x squared minus one-eighth natural log of x from x equals one to x equals two. Keeping in mind here the entire time that if we're going to find the length of a curve, I must be able to integrate this, right? I have to be able to integrate that, which means that, I mean, we already know how complicated things can get with square roots, right? And things being squared. So if I just pick a function out of the air, the chances that I'm going to be able to integrate it are pretty slim. So when you do these problems in the book, they pick these functions very carefully so that when you do take the derivative and you do square it and you do add one and take the square root, it's something doable. So let's see, see that looks like a weird function, doesn't it? Let's see what happens when we try and get it into there. So we're going to need for this the derivative, right? We're going to need to square the derivative and we're also going to need to add one to it and then take the square root. So why don't we start this problem by taking y prime, which is 2x minus 1 over 8x. Derivative of x squared is 2x minus 1 eighth. Derivative of natural log of x is 1 over x. There it is. Now what you need to do is square it, right? So I'm doing this piece by piece. I'm kind of gathering the things I need to plug in here. The derivative squared would be 2x <laughs> minus 1 over 8x times 2x minus 1 over 8x. This is just algebra now, right? What is that? 4x squared. What do you get in the middle? What's this times this? It's 2, 2x over 8x, which is 1 fourth, and then subtracting it. So minus 1 fourth. And then what do you get in the, the other middle multiplication? Another minus 1 fourth. The x is canceled there when you do this multiplication. So minus 1 fourth. And then the last one, positive 1 over 64x squared. You multiply 1 times 1, you multiply 8x times 8x, get that. This is going to look nasty, okay? It's going to look bad, but things are going to be nice in the end. Because, again, they, they very, they're very careful to pick something that's going to work. Good? Is that the derivative squared? Yes? Okay. Now we're supposed to take that and do what? Add one. Right? Add one. So I think I'm ready to write the integral down at this point. 
I'm going to go ahead and set up the whole integral. My integral will go from, what, 1 to 2, right? Because they said from 1 to 2, x equals 1 to x equals 2. And then it's going to be the square root of 1 plus this thing, 4x squared minus a half plus 1 over 64x squared dx. Any questions? You can combine the 1 minus the half. You can't combine these together because they're not. One's on top, one's on the bottom. So I, the most I could do at this point, I guess, would be 1 to 2 integral, what, like 1 half plus 4x squared plus 1 over 64x squared. Uh, what? What was that? Do what? Take what out? Well, this one doesn't have an x squared. I, if I'm going to factor an x squared, I, I have to have x squared in all of them. I don't know if well, that's I what you meant. Uh, this would be, no, no, you can't do x multiplication. This looks like a really bad integral, right? I mean, it really does kind of look bad. But I'm telling you, again, they picked the problem so it would work. So there's some more algebra we can do here. What's that? Not because the square root, we can't. If there were no square root here, we would just do power rule, we'd be done. But the square root screws everything up. So let's do this. This right here, I'm going to work with this on the side. 1 half plus 4x squared over 1 plus 1 over 64x squared. What am I about to do? Get a common denominator. All right? So I need to, my common denominator will be 64x squared. That means I have to multiply this top and bottom by 32x squared, top and bottom. And that will create the 64x squared on the bottom. What do I have to multiply top and bottom here? 64x squared. What's 64? times 4, 256, x to the fourth. And then finally, I don't have to touch that one, right? Now I can put them all together. On the top, let's put that in descending order. My new numerator, let's put it in descending order. Highest power of x down. Would it not become 256x to the fourth plus 32x squared plus 1? And then the bottom 64x squared? Isn't that what it would become? Now, again, they picked this problem so it would work. The top, the top is a perfect square trinomial. Anyone see it? It's something times itself. What is it? 16x squared plus 1. This right here is 16x squared plus 1 squared. If I square that, don't I get this? 16 times 16, 256. 16 plus 16. 32, and then the 1 at the end. So verify it on your own. But be ready for that on a problem. I mean, it's, these got to work out. The algebra's got to happen, right? All over 64x squared. But what does this whole thing live under over here? A square root. And that, I'm going to like that. Because if all of this can be rewritten as 16x plus 1, uh, x squared plus 1 squared over 64x squared, then I can take the square root of each one, right? Separately. And when you take the square root of something squared, it goes away. And the square root of the bottom is easy, 8x. So you get what? 
16x squared plus 1 over 8x dx. What could you do there? Two different fractions, right? This over this, this over this. And you're, you're there at that point. It's 2x plus 1 over 8x, and then you can integrate that. Dot, dot, dot. You can take that the rest of the way, you think? I have five minutes. I guess I'm out of time. Well, no, I have six minutes. I know you want to go. I know. I know. But I, I'm, I'm more curious than anything else because I was going to start this arc length problem with, uh, with the following, and I wanted to see if it would interest you at all. What is the circumference of a circle? 2 pi r, right? That's what you've been told? Couldn't I verify that by trying to figure out the length of that blue piece and then multiplying it times 4? All right, so that means I would have to write this blue thing as a function of x. So assuming that this is a circle with radius r, we did this before, didn't we? We said that that is this circle centered at the origin radius r. You don't need to write this down necessarily. This is more of just an exercise. And I could solve for y, and I get this. We did this when, when we verified the volume of a uh, ball, right? It was 4 thirds pi r cubed. I did the same setup. But this time, I'm trying to find the arc length. So I'm going to need to take the derivative of this and square it. Right? What's the derivative of this? Uh-oh. Well, derivative root of something is 1 over 2 times the root of that something, right? Times the derivative of what's in here. Careful, r is a constant. All right, derivative of r squared, 0. Negative 2x. That's the derivative. Clean that up. Negative x over root r squared minus x squared, yeah? What's wrong? Yeah, the two, those twos went away. Then I'm supposed to square this, right? Hold on, I haven't even gone into the arc length formula yet. Square this, which would give me x squared over r squared minus x squared. That's nice, right? Squaring that, the negative goes away. Squaring the root, the root goes away. Wonderful. Now I'm ready for the formula. My integral should go from where to where? 0 to r square root of 1 plus y prime squared. This, right? Oh, uh, sorry, this one, right? Which is x squared over r squared minus x squared. Starting to get excited. What, what should I do now? What should I do now? What worked last time when we looked at it and said, what the hell do we do? What worked? Common denominator? When we get a common denominator here, you're going to get on top and bottom here, r squared minus x squared. And so when you do the addition, I think the x squareds cancel. And you're just left with r squared on top and on the bottom, r squared minus x squared dx, right? Can I split this into two roots? Root on top, root on bottom? Yes? What's the square root of r on top? Sorry, square root of r squared. r, that's a constant. Pop it out. r. What's still left? 1 over square root r squared minus x squared dx. How would you do that integral? Trig sub. Right? r is a constant. But we probably have a formula for this, don't we? Let's go to the formula. What formula is this? Is it on our sheet somewhere? Uh, it's formula number 16. It's formula 16. So we have 
R from the front. Formula 16 says arc sine of u over a, where u is the variable. So for us, u is x and a is r. So this should be x over r. And that's it, right? That's the antiderivative. Evaluated where to where? 0 to r. Plug r in. r over r? 1. Arc sine of 1? Pi over 2. So we get r times arc sine of 1, which is pi over 2, minus now plug in 0, arc sine of 0 is 0. Who cares? So our answer is pi over 2 times r. But that's only the first piece. Times 4, 2 pi r. It's time to go. All right. Um, homework for this section, how about get caught up? All right? I will see you for a quiz on Thursday. So be on time Thursday, because I'm going to start class with the quiz right away. I don't want people coming in 10 minutes late. Watch, I'm going to be late now, right? I'm going to be the one who's late. No class tomorrow. Campus.